Today I want to show you another example of how to use a thermal image diagnostic approach on a headlight issue and some tips on how to do it more effectively. Thermal imaging diagnostics in the automotive industry is really pretty new and therefore your skills have got to be developed. I can remember back when lab scopes first came out. Those of us that got them thought, well, this is pretty cool, and we would bring up a waveform and try and understand it. But you know, it took a while for us to really understand what we were seeing on the scope, be able to interpret that and use it as diagnostic information. Thermal imaging is very much like that. You don't just take the camera and take a thermal shot, look at it, and have your answer. It's comparative analysis that gives you the most information. Our vehicle is a common postal delivery truck, and the complaint is that the headlights always turn on, but after three to four minutes, they begin to blink on and off. Sometimes it's a regular pattern, and sometimes it's very erratic. Now keep in mind, since these trucks always drive in traffic and stop and start so often, they drive with their headlights on all the time. So the first question is, why use thermal imaging in the first place? Well, the answer is, with thermal imaging, you can notice things that you can't with just your eyes. Let me illustrate. Here's the fuse box, and here it is with a thermal image. What do you think? Is it good or bad? Yeah, it's bright yellow, red, and you might at first say, wow, that's hot. So here's my first tip in developing your thermal imaging technique. Look at the image, of course, but also read the temperature. In this case, it's 99 degrees. That's not so hot. Now let's keep in mind what the thermal imaging camera is reading. It is not reading temperature. It's detecting thermal radiation. And the temperature that's displayed is a calculation. It's an accurate calculation based on that thermal radiation. We'll get more into that on in another session. But for now, keep this in mind. Just because it's bright yellow and red doesn't mean it's hot. Let's move on. So to me, the fuse for the headlights does have current running through it, as it should, but at only 99 degrees. I don't think that's our problem. According to the wiring diagram, the power goes through the fuse and then directly into the headlight switch, then the dimmer switch, and finally the headlights themselves. On this vehicle, you have to remove part of the instrument panel to get access to the headlight switch. Looking at the switch installed with the headlights on and the issue occurring, we can see that the temperature of the switch is 154 degrees. Here's another view of the switch with it dismounted but still turned on. The temperature is 157 degrees. In this picture, I unplugged the switch from the harness and immediately viewed it with a thermal camera. The surface between the switch and the connector is 180 degrees. So here's my next tip. Don't stop just because you found something hot. You know, current flows through the entire circuit and so should your diagnostics. Follow it all the way through the circuit. The circuit continues to the dimmer switch. The thermal image shows that the temperature is only 81 degrees. Now in this picture I have the old switch on the left not even plugged into the harness and the new switch on the right plugged in and the headlights have been on for several minutes. You can see that the old switch is still 101 degrees even after being unplugged for a while. Look at the target where the temperature was actually calculated. The new switch plugged in with the headlights on is considerably cooler. Now look close at the pictures. You can see my hand at the bottom, and it's warm. The new switch on the right itself is not warm, but remember it is plugged in. You can see the wire harness behind it, and it's warm, but not hot. The headlights are on. The body of the switch itself is actually dissipating the heat as it is supposed to. So my last tip is this. It's comparative analysis that gives you the most information. We left the new switch in place, and the headlights on for 20 minutes and they never blinked again. So as you're developing your thermal imaging diagnostic techniques, here's my advice. Don't just take the quick shot and think you have an answer. These cameras are so light, easy, and small. They're very easy to use. 
So take it and look at everything and compare. It's the comparative analysis that gives us the most information.